LSU play UAB on Saturday night for senior night. Senior night. And there's been a lot look, you know, read into the names listed and who's listed, who's not, who doesn't have their seatbelt on. But no, there's all this, um, you know, ooh, Jaden Daniels' name wasn't listed. Ooh, this person's name was. Here's the thing. If their names weren't listed for senior night, that may mean they're coming back. That may mean they're not. Here's what it does mean. They haven't made up their mind yet. So, like, just chill. We'll figure it out. Um, but, you know, it's it's very it feels very good looking at that list on senior night and seeing, you know, Micah Baskerville is going to be out of eligibility. He's gone. You know, Allie Gay is gone with eligibility. Jeray Jenkins is gone with eligibility. There's some of these guys who don't have an extra year left. They've used all of it up. Todd Harris. But there's, there's, there's certain guys on this team who we thought were for sure going to the NFL this season. I mean, after this season, uh, Jaqueline Roy, Jay Ward, um, you know, Mike Jones Jr., uh, guys like this. And I, Jaden Daniels even, all I heard was this is Jaden Daniels' one-year shot and he's going to the NFL. Matt Muscona told us that on this very show. I had no reason not to believe that, you know. Of course, he's already probably gone to college one year too longer than he wanted to. But right now, it's about, about draft placement for these guys. Where they're going to be drafted, how much money they are standing to make or lose by returning or going, and weighing that option, weighing those decisions. And I got to tell you, for me, I feel like Jay Ward, Jaqueline Roy, should return. You know, Jay Ward, he could go, and he could still be a third round, fourth round pick. But guys, teams wouldn't really have seen all of what he can do yet. Um, even though it's all there on film, you know, leading LSU in takeaways the last few years. Since 2019, led LSU in interceptions as well. Since 2019, led LSU in pass breakups. Uh, I think also um, forced fumbles and defensive touchdowns, of course. Jay Ward has been a singular force um, at DBU, and he's clocked a lot of miles. And the idea of him playing another season at LSU is kind of crazy, but I think that's what might happen. And we think... Uh, he owes it to himself to do it because not only would he have a chance to potentially compete for three national championships by the end of his career, um, he will have played for Coach Ed Orgeron, head coach Brian Kelly. He would have played in the pandemic season, in the 2019 national championship season. Like, I mean, this guy would be among the most experienced and most, like, traveled and most appearant, appeared. Uh, LSU Tigers. It, it's pretty crazy with Jay Ward if he were to return. Jaquelin Roy, I feel he owes it to himself to return because, you know, when you look at the injuries he's had this season, it's basically made it so you can only see him doing, like, his subtle, dirty work. He hasn't really been able to be a playmaker because he's more or less been on just on the field, you know, swallowing up those gaps controlling those gaps and allowing everyone else to flourish, which has made, you know, Makai Wingo into an All-American this season. You know, having someone like Jaquelin Roy being constantly, you know, occupying that center or one of the guards um, or both on the same play, that's extremely beneficial to someone like Makai Wingo who can already get into the backfield by himself. So... Quaylen Roy, I feel like he has put enough on tape there to be, you know, drafted within the first four rounds. But I don't think it would happen because of the injuries. And because of, if you really look at his statistical output, it really doesn't capture Jaqueline Roy's influence for LSU. You have to really find that by going through the film and really doing your due diligence watching his, his output. And it's not even a lot of what he does directly. It's what the 
outcome of what he's doing and how they're trying to stop it, what that creates, how that wears down the offensive line, how that puts the offensive line at a disadvantage or in the wrong position. You know, going into this game, that's going to be a lot of what the talk is, but I feel for UAB for this game, this actual game itself, not just talking about whether Jaden Daniels is going to come back, whether this guy's going to come back. The game itself, LSU versus UAB, you know, it's not straightforward. This isn't just an obvious penciled in LSU victory. When has that ever been true about 2022 with, with this team? When, ha when has there ever been a penciled in victory? Even when we've blown teams out, we weren't predicted to. It has always been strange this year. We were predicted to, to really take control of Arkansas 13 to 10. Under 300 total yards of offense. You know, like 86 passing yards. LSU can win while, while throwing under 90 passing yards per game. We've done that twice against Auburn and now Arkansas, which is just insanity. But we're not going to get away with that going forward. And against UAB, this is a chance. We've said this so many times this season. Before the New Mexico game, before Tennessee, you know, even before Arkansas, this is a game where LSU's offense and the receiving core and Jaden Daniels can really get it figured out, really get their chemistry going, yada, yada, yada. I always say it, and we never see it. We saw it against Florida. We haven't seen it again. It's hard to imagine that this receiving core, you know, Malik Neighbors has one touchdown through 11 games, through 10 games, sorry. Kayshawn Booty, one touchdown through 10 games. He had nine through six last year. Totally different offense, I get it. But the lack of production is stunning. It's startling, and it's... We're not going to beat Georgia doing this. And really, if we don't beat Georgia, what's the point of everything? Everything from here on out, after UAB, after a and M. I mean, Georgia is the one-game season. That's the championship. That's the Super Bowl. You know, until we get there, that's the Super Bowl. That's the championship. And so, what what should we be doing right now? What should we, what should we be doing against UAB? What should be the goal for UAB? The goal for UAB is Jaden Daniels throws over 300 yards through the air. Okay, shouldn't be too hard. Should not be too hard against UAB with that receiving core, with that receiving core that we've got. Okay, they should be licking their chops, ready to just eviscerate UAB. Brian Thomas Jr. back from concussion protocol. You know, maybe this is. You know, finally an opportunity for Jack Besh to get some some, act, some proper targets. Um, really, that's a story that I am just, just, even though I'm close to that story, it's still, I'm just lost on it because it's like, is he just so hurt that he's not getting the ball? What's going on? Why aren't they giving Jack the ball? Jack would have helped the offense against Arkansas big time. Wasn't used. Very strange. I think against UAB, if Jack Besh is not used at all against UAB, then you're really almost telling a player to transfer. If you don't throw a single target to Jack Besh and he's not like in a hospital, there's no excuse. And really, you're like almost asking for a player to transfer. So I would love to see Jack Besh given a start, given a proper opportunity to absolutely be a big part of this offense, which we know he can be, which he was last year, leading catcher, leading receiver on the team. Scored against Alabama, Arkansas, you know, this is a dude who really was big time for LSU last season, and that's just seemed to be lost on people. And the thing about Jack Besh, why I'm bringing him up, is because he, he gets this offense going. You know, he gets his offense going. He gets his passing game going. You know, you've got to find time, find a way to get him the ball. And I, I don't understand why he has not been, been counted on. 
I understand the fumbles on special teams. I understand also that wasn't his fault 100%. It was also the fault of the stupid special teams coordinator. Having him switch sides with Gregory Clayton Jr. seconds before the ball is kicked off. Basically putting him in a really disadvantaged position because... Well, Tennessee's kicker saw that and it just, you know, pooched it into an area where Jack was going right into the sun. Having to really track that thing, it was, it was the worst thing possible. And so, you know, there's just a there's, a, there's a path for him to get back to the field. There's a path for him to be getting the football. I just want to see LSU's offense take it and, and get unleash this guy. And, you know, Kayshawn Booty as well. The, both Booty and Besh, Booty, Besh, and Neighbors should all score a touchdown against UAB. That, to me, is, is necessary. Get all three of those guys another touchdown. You know, you should be able to do that against UAB in the next week against a and You should be able to do that against those two defenses, right? with these receiving cores. You know, but really the guy that, you know, of course the passing game, get the passing game going, get the receiving game going because we get it. we're going to need that against Georgia. We have to start using these kind of gimme games in a way against lesser opponents to really hone that in. We didn't take advantage of that against Southern which was a big, big, big mistake to take Jaden Daniels and Kayshawn Booty out of that game far too quickly. I don't care what the score was. I really don't. You leave those guys in until you feel confident. They've, they're, they're building that chemistry. They've made progress today on that chemistry. There were touchdowns to be had for Kayshawn against Southern, and we didn't find him. That's a problem. We needed to get him at least two touchdowns in that game. Same thing with New Mexico. You know, obviously, Booty wasn't there because of the baby that he, that he had, Kylan. But that's a game where you get neighbors' touchdowns. It's a game where you get best touchdowns. But, you know, here's the thing. Defensively. I know offense is the biggest worry, but defensively, our running defense has to stop Dwayne McBride, the running back, from UAB, 17 touchdowns, 1,406 yards already on the season. Like, wow. 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns on the season. Like, are you serious, dude? That is incredible. And I understand his competition is lower. North Texas, you know, teams like that. But they still played Liberty. You know, held Liberty to a 21-14 win. Um, almost every big team they've played, or I guess I should say bigger team that they've played, you know, they've actually kept it close. Kept it within a score or, you know, seven, eight points. So LSU, they still have never played a team like LSU, or a team as fast as LSU. So, there are really no excuses for an LSU defeat here. There's really no excuses for an LSU hiccup here. Um, I understand the whole, let's survive, let's advance, let's just get through each game and hopefully win each game. And here's the thing, I'm not going to complain if LSU comes out there, lays a stinker, and still gets a win. I'm not going to cry about it. This season has been incredible. I predicted a 9-3 and season for LSU before the year began. So anything from here on out for me, way beyond bonus. This team is way out of schedule. And, you know, this is where LSU should be in contention for championships. So it feels feels great. But this team can actually win a championship this season. I know that sounds crazy. It's true. And you better start believing it. With two losses, this team can take this championship out from underneath everybody. But here's the thing. We most likely will have to beat Georgia at least obviously for the SEC title game, but we might have to beat Georgia twice. 
you know, there might be a rematch there in the CFP. It wouldn't be for the opening game. They'll, they would spread us out and make us, you know, rematch in the title game. But I guarantee you, you know, I guarantee you if LSU beat Georgia, if LSU beat Georgia in the SEC title game and we advance to the college football playoff, I'm going to say it right now. This team is winning a national championship this year. If this LSU Tigers team can beat Georgia in the SEC title game and get into that college football playoff, we are winning the entire thing. No one would be wanting to play LSU. No one wants to play against that defense. No one wants to have to try and contain Jade Daniels, I guess unless you're Barry Odom. And that's another thing. That's another thing about this offense. You know, we always would just say, oh, well, if we can't throw the football, well, Jaden Daniels' legs will bail us out. And that's how it was for a lot of the season. Jaden's just bailing us out of those legs. That was nowhere to be found against Arkansas. Nowhere to be found. Ten total rushing yards from Jaden Daniels. I get that that sack-adjusted yards, I think he maybe had like 30 or something. Sacked seven times, by the way. Which is just insanity. Offensive line was really, really, really brutalized. And uh, the pass protection from the running backs was really weak as well. Um, Josh Williams had a few good blocks, but outside of that, nothing. Um, you know, this is, this is a... <laughs> Arkansas may have found the blueprint on how to stop Jaden Daniels, or at least limit him. And I don't see LSU having another bad offensive game like that. Unless they really run into Georgia playing the same way and they don't change anything. Going into Georgia in the SEC title game, playing the same way offensively, we would get we would get smacked around by Georgia. Because that would play right into their hands. They can handle mobile quarterbacks. I mean, they basically have three mobile quarterbacks as linebackers. I mean, like, the speed of that defense is unreal. But here's the thing. The secondary for Georgia is actually where they have their worst players. You know, what's funny is Keely Ringo, who had the pick six on, on Bryce Young in the title game, had a great, great postseason and a great last year for Georgia. He's actually fallen off. He's actually had a really poor season this this year, actually. Um, he's been good in spots, but he's had a really poor overall season and has just plummeted off the draft boards. I believe he was one of the top DBs in the draft, in next year's draft, projected by Mel Kuyper. And now he's not even on the list. Or he's in the honorable mentions. So, like... Or he's one of the, the people who dropped the farthest. So, like, that... That shows you a lot about, you know, Georgia have some weaknesses in the secondary. If there's any weakness you could point out, that's where it is. So, if LSU can get some rhythm in that passing game going, hit the big plays to Booty, hit the underneaths to Besh, hit the over the middles and the deep shot, deep down sideline shots to, to neighbors or to Brian Thomas Jr. But you've got to, you've got to hit these guys. You've got to get the ball to Kayshawn Booty. You've got to get the ball to Kayshawn Booty. I cannot stress that enough. The guy should be having at least seven, eight catches a game. And when we look back on this season and see his stat lines, we're just gonna we're gonna shake our heads for for years on end. And that to me is really bothersome. That that's gonna just stick with us, unless you know. Hopefully, Booty can end this season on a high. Get four, or three, you know. 500 more yards, hopefully, and a couple more touchdowns, and end this with like 600, 700 yards and like five touchdowns. You know, that would be right now. That would be like a blessing from from God if like Kayshawn could like get that get that going by the end of this season. And you know what? Actually, if we could get Kayshawn going, get him the football finally, get him touchdowns, get him in the end zone, that equals winning games for LSU. This isn't just like, oh, let's get Keisha on the ball, let's pat his stats so he looks good on the draft boards. This is how you beat Georgia. That is how you beat Georgia, because then you give that, that gives Jaden Daniels space. 
because now the linebackers are worried about the pass. The linebackers are getting a bit deeper. They're worried about, you know, blitzing relentlessly. They understand that they could get beat over the middle, leaving a huge, huge crater of space behind them if they, they blitz that wrong gap at that wrong moment. So what you have is a defense that second guesses itself. What you have is a defense that can't really figure out where and when Jaden Daniels is going to pull the trigger and tuck it and run. And that's what you want. You want Jaden Daniels out of the pocket, extending the play with eyes downfield, with eyes on running as well, running and passing the ball. You want him to be a dual threat on every play. You want Georgia to have to defend every blade of grass. And I know we're not playing Georgia this weekend. But everything we do against UAB, everything we do against Texas A&M should be modeled, should be prepared, should be laid out as a format, as a blueprint, as a formula for how we beat Georgia. Because it's, it's, these are things that make us a better football team against anybody. But really... Not thinking ahead, but also respecting your current opponent while making your team better and also preparing your team for a game we're already scheduled to play in. Um, a game that we're not really looking ahead to say, hey, we have to play that game. Um, that's, that's a big deal to me. Getting you know, three, four passing touchdowns, 300 passing yards from Jaden Daniels, getting Booty, getting Besh, getting Neighbors touchdowns, getting Besh back in the damn game plan which would absolutely help boost this offense. You know, save the wear and tear on Josh Williams and John Emery Jr. and Noah Kane, Armani, Armani Goodwin maybe a little bit there. And that's the thing. That's the thing I'm, I'm really looking at, I'm worried about, I'm concerned about, and I really hope we can do it. And I think, I think this is the week LSU does it. I'm going to predict LSU win this thing 34-14. And, you know, not the 40-burger plus points that we would hope. I think LSU are going to rest some guys kind of at the end, kind of be a little cautious. But I really do believe, which, you know, the word believe, I guess, doesn't have you know, fact added to it, but I really do feel Kayshawn is going to get going in this game big time. I hope they don't rest him too soon. I hope they let him play. This is his final season at LSU. Let him play every snap possible. I hope uh, we see Jack Besh scoring. I hope we see Malik Neighbors scoring. Malik Neighbors had an awesome season. Get him those touchdowns to really kind of pay tribute to what he's done with those hard-earned yards. And then, you know, that would hopefully allow Jaden Daniels to kind of just chill for this game and just throw the football and save save his legs and the hits. Save those for AM and Georgia. I really feel like, you know, 34-14 LSU is going to be what's going to happen. And I feel like LSU have a chance to get this offense firing on all cylinders in the passing game. And for me... That's where it is, but defensively, if we don't stop Dwayne McBride, 17 touchdowns, 1,400 yards already, this could be an interesting, interesting, interesting night at Death Valley. Senior night, baby. I just want to thank all of our seniors. All of you guys are 2019 national champions, too. You, you were part of history at LSU. You were part of a big, 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 big deal at LSU, and... You know, I just want to thank you and wish you the best of luck in, in the next stage, which is most likely the NFL. And um, we're very appreciative of you guys as Tigers. And hopefully uh, LSU are going to pack that stadium, sell it out, and uh, do this thing right. Everybody, watch this game this weekend. Support your Tigers. I know it says UAB, and you think, oh, it's a gimme game. Watch the game. Support your Tigers. Take it in. This is a season of historic proportions. Um, and it's been fun. It's been an incredible ride. And, you know, this is a this is a game where we can kind of relax and, and kind of watch how this team is going to develop. 
how this team are going to prepare to take on Georgia.